Okay, so I will call the meeting to order at 7.02. Why don't we just go around and do our roll call attendance and then we'll say our the pledge. So I am present and no one is in the room with me. As we all know, it's okay if someone is, we're just declaring it because of Zoom. Uh, Karen? Yes, I am present and no one is here with me. Okay, and Janice? I am present and my husband's in the house, but not in this particular room at the moment. <laughs> Okay, well, he's welcome to come on and say hello. Uh, so, so Heaney. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. No one is in the room with me. Okay, and Janet? Uh, I am present and no one is in the room with me. Okay, and then we have Yvette with us and Ryan, the um, who's interested in becoming an alternate trustee. So welcome, good evening, everyone. Let's stand and say the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. So we don't technically have any appointments, but Ryan, it's nice to have you here again. Thank you for joining us. Um, so um, I guess we'll just get started. Our old business, uh, January's action items. Uh, let me find those, I have them here. Okay, so our action items for January. Um, library director to report on library statistics during COVID-19 pandemic at February meeting, that's today. Um, library director to set goal with the Library Board of Trustees about strategic plan, we haven't really addressed that. Treasurer drafting memo of understanding with the town. Janet, have, do you have anything to report on your investigations with that? Um, I'm almost done with it. Okay, awesome. Um, so, correct, yeah. okay, thank you. Corrected minutes for Question mark meeting. I believe that was me from the January 22nd non-public meeting that I took minutes for. I did send them to you. Of course, I had to then correct the ones I sent you because I put the wrong date on them, but that's the way today was. So you have them. Um, chair to send library director's letter of employment to the rec director. I did do that um, also today because you know it is what it is, but it's done. So done before the meeting. And library director to check with Jason about attending meeting on February 23rd. Is that confirmed, Eva, with him? Okay. And library director to bring draft library dress code to February Library Board of Trustees meeting, which we all received a copy of that, correct? Yep. Okay, great. So, so far, so good. Anything else for old business? Okay, new business policies. We have two policies um, that Yvette sent us. One was the photography and videography policy. Let's address that one first. Um, did everybody have a chance to take a look at this and at to the, the videos that Yvette shared with us, which were very interesting? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Eva, is there, I have one comment on this, but before I start, is there anything you'd like to bring to our attention about this? Um, I'm just looking for lots of papers. Okay. <laughs> um, so um, the thing with the, with the videography, um, um, what's going to this? There was, an incident on, I think Saturday, Saturday. Um, someone was at the post office filming the mm. post office employees. Um, and I, I received a text because um, Jen Stover, I don't know how she found out frankly, but um, it was actually on social media and after, and I went back to try to find it and, and I don't know if they took it down, but somebody had posted something in one of the Merrimack forums about uh, um, videotaping or camera at the post office. And just, it came coming out and saying how supportive this person who posted it was about the employees in the post office. Like they okay. were saying, I'm, it was very supportive and what a great job the, um, 
our, the postal workers in the Merrimack Post Office do, but they did reference the camera. So that may have been how she found out. Okay, because that's, you know, that's kind of like stuff that we're, we're discussing on the New Hampshire um, email list. And then we had a discussion about it today in department heads. Um, and, you know, the, the policy that I sent you is a policy that um, some of the other libraries and GMOs have adopted. Um, so, so that's a, a place to start. Um, what we really need to do next is to communicate with the town manager and the town attorney to find out um, what holds water. You know, um, the, the guidelines for us the RSAs in terms of patron confidentiality are much stricter mm -hmm. than in another uh, department. So that's something that we are talking about, you know, in, in the library. Um, so I, I mean, that's kind of like my, my opening statement about this. I mean, I'd love to hear what you guys um, what your response to it is and what your thoughts are about this. And if you've watched the videos mm -hmm. or heard about other instances, you know what your thoughts are about it generally. Um, I watched the videos. I, um, I would be very concerned if one of our staff were approached in a way that they felt was harassing in this particular instance. That was my instant concern was for our staff members who are so dedicated and want to be helpful to be feeling like someone was um, trying to catch them out in some way or put them in a bad position. Um, I, I would love if we can get the policy um, to a place where we are comfortable with it and have it looked at by the town attorney. I think that's the right thing to do. We need to have some sort of document. I also watched the video of the police officer um, training, I guess it was like a short one, like the two minute one. And really he did say, you know, be as helpful as you can. Um, and we just have to be mindful about our patron confidentiality, obviously. Um, my one concern or comment on the policy itself was that under um, number two, it looks like, I feel like the line in the bold should have kept going, which seems like a small thing, but it says in no circumstances may anyone take a photo or film a library patron without the consent and then it stops. And I think it should be without the consent of the patron or their parent guardian of minor, like that all needs to be, to me, bold and underlined. Like we just, I don't know, just to clarify it, so. Okay. What okay. are other people's comments, thoughts? Janet, did you wanna say something or? You're yeah. muted also. No? Okay. Does anyone else want to share their thoughts, comments? Karen, please. I think number three is, is, is what addresses this uh, the most directly, this First Amendment, whatever. It, and and um, if I, I don't know if we can, if it is legally okay for us to do that, but no commercial or media photography or filming may occur in library facilities without the prior written permission and approval of the library director. That says it all. Mm -hmm. So if, if, if that's okay, then I think that, um, you know, that, that because, as, as glossily positive as those films or that film was to those poor people at City Hall, um, it was harassment and it was, it was, I don't know. I, I felt, I felt terrible for them because it's some, I, I, it wasn't protecting the rights of the filmer, it was harassing. So I think, I think number three, if it's, if it's legally okay to do that, wouldn't, wouldn't that solve the problem or pretty much solve the problem? 
in that the person would not be allowed to record because they are part of a commercial media? Yes. Yes. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Or mm -hmm. media photography. And mm -hmm. media photography, I mean, in the film, what he ended up finally doing was saying what his, um, his contact was. What his, the YouTube channel? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, and, and what the YouTube channel was called. And mm -hmm. so, he, I mean, he was, a, he was, he was, it, that was media photography. It was taken for the purpose of showing it to the public. Mm -hmm. And of course, not having any control about what was actually put on as, um, you know, as, as wording mm -hmm. that twisted what things mm -hmm. meant. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that, that's, that's just outrageous. Mm -hmm. I, I don't it's, know. It felt like as if he is doing kind of investigation, but openly and then, you know, he wants it for his private gain. That's what I felt like, you know, making himself popular and posting that up, but it's not helping actually making the workplace better because he was infringing on when they were working. When they are trying to come and help him, do you need any help over here? That's what I felt like, you know, if I'm working in an office and somebody suddenly barges and say, hey, you know, I want to photograph, I'm photographing what you're working. It's an infringement of my personal space in that, that time. And I, under the workplace protection, they do have their protections that they shouldn't be infringed when they are working unless it's their supervisors or something when it goes wrong. So I would say that was, I think I agree with Karen, like the third things should be there. Um, it's, I, I understand First Amendment, but if he, the way he, it's not that he went and just asked them some questions. Hey, you know, I'm making this video. I just want to ask questions. What work do you all do? But he's pointing out, hey, these people are not working. They're shutting the thing down. That means what he was, he didn't have the permission to go and ask them questions like, and start filming them without their permission. Well, yeah, I think that it's a, a sticky line though, right? Because there are, it does say that casual amateur photography. So, you know, without knowing exactly what someone's purpose is there, I'm, I'm just playing devil's advocate. Like we need to be, make <laughs> no, sure that we are. Casual, you know. Yes, I, you know, I'm here, I'm doing, so there, are, there can be some students who can come in and say, I just want to film, this is for a project. That's a totally different thing. Yes, but that too, they're expressing themselves like, hey, you know, this is for my school project or for my college project. I'm, uh, can I take some photographs or, you know, what can we interview you? But this one is like, I have cameras around me. I'm in a government office. I am doing my work. You are coming and telling me how I am going to do my work and you're filming me for that kind of. That's, I think that was he can go and say first amendment and try to prove it but there is a thin line between when you are disturbing a workplace environment so Yvette are libraries all like the libraries that oh, I'm sorry go ahead Janice well I was just curious um so we're looking at the policy and I'm sort of jumping ahead here we're looking at the policy and, and one of the first things we're saying is we won't be approving it until it's kind of gone before in the town and the attorney, correct? Well, I think it's going to work like the like the COVID reopening plan did, where we kind of went back and forth a little bit, you know, because this is, um, you know, the ultimate end of a policy is someone is suing the town. You know, they, I think that's where I see this going. If someone is saying you're infringing on my First Amendment rights to um, audit you as a library, um, and we see this as disrupting, you know, I mean, I, I'm I look at the photography, filming, and videography policy in hand with our regular rules and regulations for patron behavior. Mm -hmm. You know, and that is very detailed. And um, there's a thing, a bullet, a couple of bullets um, that are 
that list things that are forbidden or prohibited in the library, one being staring, leering, stalking, voyeurism, harassment, or other behavior that reasonably can be expected to disturb others, and then interfering with reasonable activities of others. You know, those are those are listed that, you know, in the regular rules and regulations that you can't do it. And then at the top of rules and regulations, there's a bold paragraph that said all library users must be able to use the library without interference from others. Um, all persons deserve to be treated with courtesy and respect. Please treat all staff, patrons, and property with the same respect you would wish to be treated. So one of the things that we talked about in department heads today is, you know, uh, trying to imagine scenarios mm -hmm. so that we can come up with scripts, responses, you know, what, what are we, mm -hmm. what are we going to do? So we have something in place rather than reacting yeah. you know, in the moment. Um, but then the, when, when we, when we were talking about the videos, it was, you know, uh, the person is not filming the customers, the person is filming the workers, you know, the employees. And so, you know, when, when you look at a policy <laughs> that says, this is patron behavior, don't bother another patron, you know, don't, uh, harass or stalk another patron, don't interfere with, with what they're doing. Well, can I say that in the video that the, that yeah, a man Gordon was his name, I can't remember his last name, um, but he said, answer the questions. You know, he, I mean, if someone asks, what are you doing at the reference desk? Let me tell you all the details of what we do here. I mean, you know, that there's like, oh, would you like to see how I process this book? I line up the label. I mean, like, you know, they, people can legitimately ask us or ask staff, what are you doing? Like, I don't think that's the worst thing. I think it's, we want to give the staff the script so that they don't end up feeling harassed so that it, there's a road way of doing it and that we have a policy to back up anything should it ultimately go south. So, right. that's... so what what we came up with was, you know, uh, treat this person the same way we would treat any patron that comes mm -hmm. into our space. How can I help mm -hmm. you? Um, you know, I think the discussion on the nays list is, you know, one side says, uh, don't engage, be as professional as possible, answer brief questions, but don't engage. So they can continue on their way and you can continue with your work. Uh, and the other side says, but I have to tell them about the patron confidentiality RSA. <laughs> you know, and, and it's like, no one, this person doesn't want to hear about the patron confidentiality RSA, but that's mm -hmm. what we live under. So that's kind of where we're at with, with that. That's a, that's a, problem. The other thing is, you know, um, what happens if this person goes to film a patron um, working at the computer? You know, do we step in or do we let the patron defend themselves? Um, I've offered to, you know, tell a person if they come in, uh, you know, if you want a tour of the building, please make an appointment with our director. She'd be happy to, you know, uh, give you a tour of everything, you know, the non-public spaces as well, but, you know, staff spaces, um, you know, patrons aren't allowed behind the reference desk and, um, and behind the circ desk you know, or the children's desk, you know, if we're working on a patron's account, mm -hmm. even checking something out, your personal information is displayed. And it's my job, it's all of our jobs to keep that confidential for you. We don't keep a record when we check it in, it's gone. We don't keep that mm -hmm. history unless you tell us to. So, so, so really tonight, do you want us to approve the policy and then you'll talk about it with the attorney because it sounds like you and the staff are still sort of working out the way that you would feel comfortable handling this. And but we need to know what are legal. We'd like to have something, and then mm -hmm. if we develop it with the assistance of the attorney, at least we'd have something for tomorrow. Sure. Uh, the staff is very concerned about this. You know, one staff person 
says, I don't want to give my last name. And we we're saying, well, yeah, but if you give the last name, then it's over. If you don't mm -hmm. give the last name, then they'll continue to harass you about that. You know, um, and what's on your name tag? Oh, name tag is first name only. And I mean, we went around and around with trying to um, make sure that our staff is comfortable and have tools at their disposal. At the same time, it's like, okay, what the staff feels like, what our department heads feel like, and they communicated to their staff after our meeting and, and expressed to me even initial conversations with their staff last week when this whole email came out and I started forwarding lots of videos to them. They said, look, ultimately, the, if someone comes into the library to film, uh, they're gonna make us look stupid and misrepresent us no matter what our response is. And we're concerned with, uh, you know, presenting the library in the very best way that we can, you know? And it's like, okay, let me go back to the board because, you know, I, we want the board support. We want you to understand this policy and support us. And then we'll go to the town attorney and find out, mm -hmm. okay, if someone is suing the town because they didn't like what they got at the library, they didn't like, sure. You know, I mean, it's kind of like there's a big picture, but there's also what do we do tomorrow if this happens? Mm -hmm. You know, when so I said, let's, be aware of your surroundings, go back to the yeah. rules and regulations. There's some very basic stuff. What if I call the police? Call the police. Everyone has a different tolerance for the police. Go ahead and call them, you know, and so we'll deal we, with it tomorrow. So, so since this, can we go back to the policy then and try to get this through this? Because I know we Absolutely. have a lot of other things. So let's yeah. like kind of, Karen, please go ahead. Number five. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is, is the other one that I go along with. Any consent granted pursuant to this policy to permit photography or filming may be revoked at any time upon failure to comply with terms of the policy or other rules and regulations of the library. So mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. combined with number three mm -hmm. would, would at least make 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 it seem to address all of these concerns well and i think to yvette's point to have something in place that we've approved and then we'll have the attorney attorney look at it and then if things need to be changed they will be changed and you know it will be a working document but at least there will be something to back up the staff yep. should a situation arise so well, to the policy are there any things other than my comment about wanting the, uh, the rest of it underlined because I felt like it just kind of stopped there. Um, is there anything else that people would like changed or have concerns about in the policy itself? No. Okay, then I will make a motion that we approve this policy with the corrections noted and with the understanding that it will be reviewed by a town attorney. Okay, I second. So Heaney seconds, we'll do a roll call vote to approve. I'm in favor, Karen? Yes. Janice? Yes. So Heaney? Yes. And Janet? Um, yes. Janet, I couldn't hear you because you're still muted. So if you could say yes, that would be still muted. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and Yvette, thank you for bringing this to our attention and please keep us um, in the loop about how this evolves in the state. I think this is the kind of thing that we want to really keep our finger on the pulse of so that we can support the staff and be aware of how it's evolving. So thank you for that. Um, next, we have the dress code policy. Yeah. Which seemed very reasonable to me. Um, did anyone have a concern or thought on the dress code policy? You're still muted, Janet. <laughs> it was very thorough. <laughs> <laughs> it was meetings, lots and lots of meetings to hammer in. Well, it, there, it was not vague in any way, shape or form. Which is good. Yeah, no, I thought it was very specific yeah. and I appreciated things like swimwear, including flip-flops. I mean, some of this is safety concerns, not just, you know, how we want people to look. So yeah. Okay. 
Is there anything? It's great. Any changes? Okay. Janice, do you want to say something? Well, do we actually approve this part of the policy manual or because it's a piece, we still approve it? Um, it would be helpful if you could approve this now because, again, the staff are having questions okay. um, with what they can and can't wear. So mm -hmm. it is part of a larger thing and, you know. That, it, that's fine. I just wanted to make sure that that's what we were doing. It yep. seems appropriate. Okay. Would you like to make a motion, Janice? <laughs> yes, um, I will make a motion. Um, the, the dress code um, to approve the dress code policy in the what you call it, the staff policy manual. Okay. Do we have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Karen. Any further discussion? Okay, I vote in favor. Karen? Yes. Janet? Yes. Janice? Yes. And Sohini? Yes. Thank you. It was obviously a lot of time and attention went into the details of that. So, um, you know, you saved us a lot of time of what ifs and what about. So that was well done. Thank you, Yvette. Um, staff reimbursement. Let me pull this up. Um, Arafa purchased something for the staff. Um, let me get the information. Sorry, everyone. Okay, so um, the library received a check for the amount of $500 from Health Trust for the Staff Health Trust Wellness Programs last year. And um, we had some left over and Arafa bought some water bottles, I believe. And there was a difference of $6.54. And so we need to approve, oh, I shouldn't say that. I'm asking if you would be willing to approve uh, $6.54 to reimburse Arafa for the difference um, from the $500 and what we need to come up with. Is that clear? Should I read you the whole email or does that make sense? No. Okay. So yeah, there was um, $266.25 left from that $500 check and the water bottles ended up costing $272.79. So um, I would like to request that we reimburse Arafa the amount of $6.54. Janet, I'm not sure where that would best come from, but- um, Just out of special. Okay, out of special. Karen. I second. Thank you. Um, and I will, is there any discussion? Okay. Um, I will pay, I will pay for that. I will pay for that. I will say yes. <laughs> Karen, Karen? Yeah. Okay. Janice? Yes. Uh, Sohini? Oh, yes. And Janet? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Um, I think it's really important that we um, don't expect that uh, she was saying she would be willing to pay the difference. No, no. That's, this is a staff purchase. We will take care of it. So. Very good. Okay. Yeah, just so, um, uh, Yvette, you have the, did she give you the receipt or the invoice or whatever for it? Uh, yes, but she sent her personal check in to the business card. She didn't want okay. to discuss it anymore. Okay. <laughs> we will figure out a way to take care of that, right? So, okay. Um, I have very strong feelings about, um, this is off topic, but on topic, that we should be clear on what it costs to run the library and that that money should not come out of the staff's pocket. So this is, a, it's a thing for me. I feel like it needs to be accounted for from our funds. So, okay, next, NHLTA conference. Is there anyone who has, um, would like to speak to that? I, I'm sorry, I did not get a chance to look into this any further. It's on the agenda. Janet, I think you might've sent us something. Just a and it's more like an FYI, which I also see on the upcoming events um, mm -hmm. that it's in May. I mean, like I get a lot of the listserv information. I don't know who else does. So mm -hmm. this has come up a bunch and in our folders was the letter from the NHLTA that they typically send. And it was more just a heads up to everybody that it's coming if you're interested. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be like a, a webinars or via mm -hmm. some other modality, not in person. 
Right, it's, it's virtual, the 12th and the 13th of May. Oh. Yep, it's on the bottom. Okay, so just for your, your um, information that that is there and available. Okay, um, open POs. So Janet had requested that um, perhaps quarterly there be an update on um, open POs. So I think that's why this is on here right now. Um, is there something specific that you were interested in, Janet, or just to keep us in the loop? No, I was glad to or... see that the 1718 came off and I think there was only like one 1819 left. So yeah, it's looking great. Okay, great. Yeah, I think um, that's the Ingram one that um, Joanne wrote me, uh, you know, kind of notes on it saying, uh, 4,000 Ingram PO is supposed to be, she's requested that it's closed, so. Well, that's great, because that was something that we looked at when we were discussing how to pay for the shelving and different things, so it's great to see those coming off. Okay, great. Uh, copier, there was something in our packets about the copier also. I was confused by that. <laughs> <laughs> Like okay. We decide what we what was being asked or presented, or I, are we changing like our contract or getting a new machine? I was very confused by can that. I, can I make a suggestion? Um, because I I mean, there's been some emails going back and forth between Janet and myself with Deb copied on it, um, because Jen had some questions about the copier, and I don't deal with the copier. You know, I receive reports about the copier, but I don't do it. You know, I don't run the reports. So it might be best, and it might clarify this for everyone who wasn't involved in these emails. If we, if you want to set up a meeting with Max and Joanne to ask about, you know, where the payments are made, or, you know, um, Cassie was a question that came up in an email I saw today, um, the contract, how we got to this contract, the history of the copier, you know, because I can speak to some of it and then I, it's been delegated away from me already. So I think, you know, it's great if you want to have a long conversation about the copier, you know, we've had it for, I think, four years now. Um, I remember when we got it, the vendor was saying, well, we'll have to see when a refurbished new copier comes along that we can um, talk to you about. You know, there's always been a very long-standing uh, agreement with Conway about how many copies we make and what's included in the cost. And I think it might be better if, if this is a different conversation. Like, if you want to have them join us next month, you know, and really go deep in this stuff or a separate thing, you know, it's fine. I guess I, I still feel like do we have specific questions for them? Because I'm confused. Is this, we want a different contract with them? Is this, if we want, we're, the fee is too much for the maintenance? Like I'm, I don't want, I, I'd hate for them to come to a meeting and not have some sort of guidelines. Like, are they answering these specific questions? Okay. This, this is all me. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm, I'm owning this, this is me because um, Princh will fall under, actually does fall under the copier because- I have Princh update right next to it. Yeah. That will be the next thing we talk yeah, exactly. about. So. Because, um, because the printing for Princh comes from or gets routed to the copier. Um, and then, so yes, yearly, the contract fees have gone up, which to be expected, that's fine. Um, yes, we understand that this year because Pretty much nobody's in the library. There's, we're not getting copier income. We understand that too. Um, but when we bought the um, when we bought the machine, there wasn't a separate account for copier money. So it could be argued both ways as to are we in the red or in the black with respect to have we paid off the copier itself between its own expenses monthly, as well as um, like money coming in and then money going out. Have we, have we broken even? 
Um, and then with Prince added onto it, and then the yearly costs going up, um, I wanted, I've just basically been wanting to see if, because a couple months ago, or maybe six months ago, Yvette said that, <clears throat> excuse me, that Max was interested in a new copier. And so I was like, oh, let's see how we're doing with that. And, and again, it's one of those, it could be argued both ways to say, we haven't really even paid off this current copier. So that's why. And then with this information that, um, that Joanne sent with Cassie coming, being part of, um, part of the copier income versus being part of fines, I didn't know where, or one of my questions to Joanne was, does Cassie get printed to an ex exterior printer or does it get printed to through the copier? And if it gets printed through the copier, then that Cassie money is considered copier income. If it's not, then the money that we've already essentially established under the copier account actually isn't copier money, it goes to fines. So that's, that's where it's been. So that's oh. just a little history. Uh, so I think that the idea of having them come in is a good idea, whether that's part of this meeting or if we um, arrange a separate meeting with um, two trustees, perhaps to get like the full picture and get an idea of what where we want to go going forward, rather than take too much time tonight. But it seems like this has been something that I've heard spiraling around a couple of times, the copier, the copier, the copier. And I think it would be nice to know um, what reference would like what would work for the library and what direction we see it going, just to have an idea, so. Yeah, um, I mean, for me, I have one trustee asking a question that the rest of the board doesn't know about. So I, I think the rest of the board should be able to be invited into this conversation, you know, um, rather than just having this, this one line of conversation going, it doesn't seem to make any sense to me. You know, if one person has a question about the copier, someone else is going to have a question about the copier. Or when you find out that someone had a question about the copier, you're going to have a question about the copier now. You know, so it doesn't make sense. And to have this on email, you can't have this on me email with uh, me copying five of you because now you have a meeting. So right. you might as right. well have a meeting and you might as well bring this up in a meeting. Well, you know? I mean, I was just thinking that if really, if, if, well, okay. If you if you think having them come here um, to a meeting would be useful, then that's I fine. I just thought yeah. I just thought this was more like a gathering of um, information than necessarily some like that's how I viewed Janet's question was just I just wanted just a gathering it, of information. I guess it really just matters going forward, or will it will matter more going forward when and if Max decides or would like a new copier. Okay, mm -hmm. every department head that has come in since we got the copier wants a new copier. <laughs> so that's why I'm like, I don't know why we need a new copier because we oh. just got the copier, you know? And sometimes it's because they had a copier they loved at their previous job. And <laughs> that it. doesn't matter to me. So, you know, everything is printing. Off, the short answer is everything prints off that copier. Everything, Cassie, things print, things people send in if you're sitting at the computer and you're printing every, that is the only printer for the public. Okay. Um, and they can pay through the website or they can pay in the machine. One of the things that I was told today has gotten lost in the change of department heads and COVID is accounting for the CASI funds. Two department heads ago, we had a separate line for that and a separate report, and that's just been dropped, you know, by mistake. Um, so some of it's a little bit of accounting reporting, um, but you know, there's no big change in operation um, in terms of the copier. And I think the copier's fine. You know, I mean, it's like I think the copier's fine. And it has a lot of bells and whistles and some people want less bells and whistles and some people want more bells and whistles. So it's kind of, you okay. know, we can, so okay. we can, you can pick their brains about the copy. <laughs> and so why don't we let like Janet, um, we can see if that seems like something that would be useful um, or if, 
you know, Yvette saying it's fine, really, it's fine. I, Let's move I on. Think <laughs> be better, I think it would be better to have one conversation rather than emails that come every now and then, because then I have to forward that email to them. They drop everything and they find the answer. I don't, I can't have them dropping everything when you ask a question, you know, because that's what we're designed to do. We're going to do that because you're my patron right now, you know. Um, so so, so can we just, um, why don't we keep it on new business? And we say that in March, we will tentatively invite them and people can um, have their comp copy your questions asked and we will give them a list of the questions prior to the meeting. So Love they it. are aware of it. Um, and okay. let's just leave it at that for right now. Okay, okay. Princh update though. There is good news regarding Princh. And so Janet, would you like to share that good news with everyone? Sure. We finally got the, we got our bank accounts to connect. So we can now, Princh can now send us the quarterly revenue that is ours and it gets sent to our DCU account. So it's- So we're actually, that money's not just account. hanging in, in limbo. Right. It's actually coming to the library now. Exactly. So, so that's great. That's yes. good news. It took a lot of work. So is there anything else on the copier or Princh? Okay. Like I said, I've been hearing about this copier. It does kind of circle around the spiral, <laughs> the copier again. Okay. Um, statistics, museum, and database. Um, mm -hmm. Janet, this was actually also a request from you. With did you were you just for information? With the museums, yeah, with, with the museums, museums okay. because I just I wanted to just know what what people if people had been using them at all. If um, mm -hmm. I didn't ask for the database, but I did ask for the museum. Oh, I I gave you the database. Um, okay. You didn't get it last time, but okay. Um, I mean, I I think it's a challenge to assess the museum passes during a pandemic. Yeah. Uh, courier is currently closed to the public, yeah. so no one can request the pass because they chose to close. So mm -hmm. there's a little bit of you know, almost wait and see, depending on what the museum is doing. Um, and then we update our website when we get a notice like that they're closed. Um, I mean, I think, I think I wouldn't change any of the museums. I wouldn't not have any of the museum passes because in the time before it was, mm -hmm. we we're checking them out. They were using them. It's a great asset, you know, so. The time before. But in the time before, <laughs> yes. that sounded like a like a dystopian before, YA, like a dystopian YA novel in the time is. before. So. Time before, yeah, and the and in the time soon at soon to come. Let's hope. Okay, so. I'll, I'll, I can take that one. Yeah. Okay. The time to Were come. there any comments or questions for Yvette about statistics regarding uh, museum? Anything about the museum passes? I mean, did you? What did you think, Janet, when you? Um, they're definitely used. I get it. they're they're used when the facilities are open and people feel like they can go. Um, so yeah, I had I had no issues. I just like I said, I was just curious. Um, I was also I dare say glad to see that at least currently not too many have been purchased because again, if people aren't going, I'd like I don't I personally don't want to see that purchased people aren't going, but um, so, and there have only been a couple. So. On, the same, on the same note though, as soon as they are open, I feel like we should buy them because we need to be supporting those institutions and giving our patrons okay. an opportunity to get out there and support them too. So I yeah. Um, Janice, um, were you trying to say something? I'm sorry. Yeah, I wanted to just ask, they don't just come up naturally. Like you buy one in December and you buy it every December. It's not that, uh, it's not that set in stone. They have a period of, they have a season, yeah, you okay. know? Uh, so it's, this pass is good through, you know, September to May. And we buy the subscription for September to May because that's what they offer. Mm -hmm. So in other words, if this whole situation continues, we probably wouldn't be purchasing any, but if, you know, three months from now, everything goes back to normal, we're in the middle of one of their seasons, are we purchasing 
a membership or a pass package at that time, even though we're not accessing a whole season. We can always not do it. I have a feeling that they would I make adjustments. I, yeah, I have I a feeling that they, I have a feeling that. I was just, me? I wouldn't want us to not do it. I was just, I guess I'm thinking it's gonna be more, um, it's not gonna be as strict as I'm thinking it's gonna be. That's, that's just me. You know, like they wouldn't give us one because we didn't purchase it at a particular. It doesn't work, no. No. If, if I may, because I've spent a lot of time talking with museums um, about this very topic. Some, I think if some of your museums have outdoor activities, that's probably going to be a factor, right, for you guys. And also, I mean, it doesn't make sense probably for you to renew passes if the museum is closed. So that should also be a consideration. I, I think you just have to look many, what many of them are doing are you just have to reserve your appointment in advance. So if you do it that way, um, you know, it's just a matter of patron communication. You just let people know what the process is. I'll be quiet now. No, it's okay. That's great. I was actually surprised when I heard, I heard on NPR today that like the MFA had a Cezanne exhibit and I was like, I didn't even know the MFA was open. Like I just, I didn't know they were doing that, but I guess it is by appointment and that sort of thing. So. Well, we had, we had some complications with the park passes because mm -hmm. you can reserve a park pass and not be able to get in once you get to mm -hmm. the gate because mm -hmm. they're counting heads over there. Yep. We don't have any control over that. Mm -hmm. So it's very complicated. And then with the um, uh, the baseball tickets, we talked to them and said, forget it. We're just gonna hold this till next season and, and not even offer them because no one, it was the summer. No one is gonna go out. It's, you know, at the time it was too early in the, in the quarantine that no one was going out and it would be silly to even offer them. <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, some so museums, each, each one is different. Some museums may offer you an extension as well or reduced rate. Yes, uh, I we've, know. We've, yeah, so it, it because they were closed and you paid yeah. for it, so. Yeah, I think they're gonna do whatever they can to be amenable and get people back in as quickly mm -hmm. as they can when the time mm -hmm. comes, so. And probably each one will be individual. Right, everybody's going to have their own way of doing it. So, right, okay. Um, and I know that you mentioned something about the databases in your director's report. Did you want to talk about databases now, Yvette, or do you want to save that for your report? I can save it. Okay. All right. Is there any other things that should come up under new business? I just wanted to say I appreciated seeing the, the database statistics. <laughs> yeah, it's good to know. Okay, operating budget. We have the general ledger and invoice manifest for January. Any concerns? I, I didn't have any. Anyone else? I had my questions answered. Okay. All right. Okay, so with that, we'll move on to the director's report. Okay. Um, so Marge Jaffrey donated a picture book um, going up by Sherry L. Sherry J. Lee and Charlene Chua in memory of Shirley Otterman, Emily Otterman's mother who recently passed away. Um, some of you might know that Emily Otterman had served on the Building Development and Marketing Committee um, and her husband Bill Cummings serves on the MPLDF um, Committee um, as well as they both served on the Strategic Planning Committee uh, a couple of years ago, longtime residents, library users. Um, so Marge, donated the book and she also donated $100 for the purchase of library materials at Emily's discretion. What a lovely gesture. So um, I will make a motion that we accept the donation of the going up picture book and the $100 for purchase of library materials from Marge Shaffrey. I'll second. Take your pick Janice, you have Janet and Sohini seconding. Okay. Any, okay, any discussion? 
Okay, I vote in favor. Karen? Yes. Janice? Yes. Janet? Yes. And Sohini? Yes. Thank you. Okay, staff had a question about the masks. Uh, my question was, what do you want to do with the masks? How We have a box of them. Um, and I'm not sure how you want those distributed to not not staff, non-staff and non-board members. I mm -hmm. really pulled them aside for trustees, friends, and development fund committee. Awesome. Um, yeah, and, and people are picking them up as they come in. Um, staff Can would you... love to have an additional mask just because once I pass them out, now it's like the new favorite thing and it's very <laughs> comfortable, but it has a logo. So that's the nice part is that it's good work. work mm -hmm. How, can you refresh our memory? How many do you have left over? Well, I think we ordered a hundred. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if we've given them to twenty if have, if, minus five minus. Okay. I mean, if there's one set aside, we wanted to make sure that some of the stakeholders, you know, had ones. Were there other people we wanted to we wanted to give them to? Anybody else in town that we wanted to give some to? Karen. I, I just think that people that are in the building working like multiple times per week could have a second mask because they really like it and appreciate it. And, and I don't see why not. I mean, it, w it was like $4 a mask. Mm -hmm. So $8 for two masks seems to me perfectly reasonable to give to staff members that want it. I agree with you. I just didn't know if, if there are other people that we want, do we need to see about ordering more or, you know what I mean? Or if there are other people I that- I haven't time. thought of anybody else off okay. other than library committees and, and so on that normally work for the library. Like it would be thing. nice if we had like a couple like set aside and we could put them in like a little small bag and like, Hey, thanks, Paul, for meeting with us to talk about the budget. Here's a library mask, you know, like or like or like the board, the, the maybe for for select people or something. I don't know. I mean, okay, I give them one. Okay, so is is your intention not to sell the masks to the public? That's kind of a question. Janice looks horrified. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, go, take it back. <laughs> well, I, was gonna, I was going to say, if we're going to sell them to public, we're probably going to need more, <laughs> but no, I don't. <laughs> well, I mean, I think it could go either way. You know, I mean, I, it, we have sold, t library sold t-shirts, they've sold mm -hmm. tote bags, you know. I guess if people say, hey, can I get one of those, then it becomes something we need to address, but uh I don't know. I don't know that that was our intention in the beginning. So you could set them aside for people maybe who donate to the library. That's an idea. Yeah. Yeah. So we, uh, all right. Well, I'm glad they're popular with the staff. Does anybody have any concern with just for the time being giving anybody on the staff a second one who wants one? Go for it. Go for it. Okay, they can have them. I was actually so glad to hear they liked them. So oh that's- Oh my goodness, you have no idea. Oh, um, good. It's very comfy. I like the adjustable. Comfy, yeah. Have you? Who, see, you I, I you tried it. I tried you it today. Have, I was in, I didn't get mine. I'll have to, I'm going in tomorrow. I asked, so oh, I didn't know where they were because I looked in the drawer and they were like, no, they're not there. Because no. they were in my, I just put them in the drawer today because I was, I had them in my office because I thought I would be giving you keys your mailboxes and masks, but the spreadsheet for the keys isn't ready yet, which Karen found out. <laughs> we went walking down the hall Fine. to go see Joanne and harass her about keys. I just wanted my mask. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very nice. I mean, wow. For, for Great. You know, yeah, it's really nice. So, it's, okay. it's, I, it's light and it has a Filter, filter. It and, it's really, and it's very comfortable. I, I wore it as soon as I got it in my bag to the evening. I was there. I'm so excited. I'm glad they liked it. That's awesome. Okay, Janice. Well, uh, if they're, I haven't seen it, but it sounds like it's wonderful. I'm going to circle back around to would we want to sell them to the 
community? Right. Or, and or do, or do we bring that up at the next meeting and just think about it? Well, I guess if the staff wear them and they start to report to you Yvette, that people are asking if they can get one of them, then we can like address it, you know? Okay. I mean, I don't know that we, we don't, let's hope we don't need them for that much longer, but yeah. um, <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if I want to make a capital investment, but. Uh... I guess what I was thinking was, um, you know, most, if not all places you go into ask you to wear a mask. So would allowing people to purchase a mask be a little more of a buy-in to that? Like, hey, we, we're gonna wear our mask and not only we're gonna wear our mask, we're gonna wear our library mask. That, that's all I was thinking. Mm -hmm. But let you know, I'm sure you guys will let us know, Yvette and staff, if people are asking for them. Okay. I mean, it, as you say that, Janice, I know that Parks and Rec, uh, I know they were giving away the gators, which is more like a tube that you pull up over your nose for different um, activities they were doing over the summer. And it had their Merrimack Parks and Rec big logo on it. It was pretty sweet, you know. Um, well, I guess can, we, else. can we charge you and Arafa with like sort of, uh, surveying the land or ask Arafa to survey, like figure out would this, would this work? Does it seem, get the, the um, ideas from the CERC staff and see, is this something we would want to do? Because ultimately we're going to be asking them to be doing that yeah, too. That and, you know, so do they think it would sell? Would it be something we'd want to do? Would it be a fun, what, would, what would it be a fundraiser for? I love the idea of, if we're doing something like that, that it's for something specific too. You know what I mean? Like that it's not just like, yeah. But. Okay. Well, I'm glad it was a success. So can't wait to get mine tomorrow. <laughs> so, um, okay. Well, I can also send one to Marge. How about that? Oh, that would be nice. I yeah. and we'll get some feedback and see if she likes it as much as everyone else seems. I think that's, that's a great idea. Um, um, yeah. Okay. Um, did you want to highlight anything else? I had a couple of questions for you, but. I can see what I underlined. I underlined things that I want to bring up. So if you have other things in addition to the underline, then you. Well, under maintenance, I'm just curious about the beam and yes. where we are with the beam that. Okay. So. I forwarded the uh, video from, um, from Northern Lights to a contractor that Jason works with. And I haven't heard back from him. Okay. So I need to ping him again. <clears throat> um, that's, that's one thing. Um, I kind of feel like I wanna wait until that's resolved or, or spring before we do the granite sign because mm -hmm. that could be, it, it's gonna be a road closure for both of these projects. And I, I just wanna, Face out the road closures um, and also not deal with snow for a road mm -hmm. closure. Um, so I, under administration, um, Friday, um, Paul and I went to the other locations to show them to Jason. I had gotten a request from Jason that he wanted to see where these things were and what they were, and I wrote to Paul, so I, you know, because I don't have a key and and it's not a you know, their town building. So Paul said he would love to come with us and that was great. Uh, so we walked up the hill to the JOACC and walked around and Jason took pictures. And then we walked down the hill and across the street to the MOA building and walked around and went in that. And, um, you know, kind of uh, Paul was able to fill Jason in on a lot of the history of the town and the buildings and what used to be here and what used to be there. Uh, it was very interesting. And then, you know, we didn't go to the Pinenberg property because you can't go there. It's just there. And he knows where that lot is. And they looked at a map and, and Paul pointed it out to him. So um, Jason will have, uh, you know, he has some good information, you know, to do his drawings for you for next week. I'm great to see these things. Great. So that was that. 
Um, I, we talked about the First Amendment audits. Oh. Um, the thing about the databases, that's really just to let you know the State Library will not be renewing the EBSCO database. And the complication that we have and the other GMILKS libraries have is because Novelist Plus, which appears in our catalog, is tied to Novelist, which is an offering of EBSCO. And if Novelist and EBSCO are not renewed, then we'll have a bunch of empty squares because Novelist Plus won't be populated. So um, GMILKS is looking at other services in place of Novelist Plus. Um, Kevin <clears throat> is our uh, GMILK staff now, and he has, you know, he got a quote just for GMILKS libraries from EBSCO, and it was double what he expected. And, you know, GMILKS has a certain amount in capital that we can use to bridge, you know, payments because every library is on a different um, cycle, either an annual or a fiscal year. Um, so it's something we're watching, something you need to know about. Um, so that's kind of, <laughs> that's kind of fun. But then you can see, you know, what we're looking at is we're looking at the usage numbers, mm -hmm. you know. Um, department had signed up for a three-part series of HR webinars by Primex, um, best practices in hiring. These are all very good. Um, so it's, it's good that we're, we're going to this. Um, under adult services, Max has a request. Uh, Max would like to request to move funds from the personnel line to the Hoopla line. And he, I included in here his email to me. Um, so you know what he's thinking. Um, so we're spending $1,400 per month on Hoopla and he would like to have another $3,000 moved from personnel to material. Um, one of the things he said, they, he did a, him and um, Max and Casey did a virtual coffee connections with Matt Kasparius. And this is a Zoom call with Matt and um, some of the senior groups um, just to kind of connect people and <clears throat> ask questions about stuff in the library or comment on the library. And one of the things they kept saying was how much they liked Hoopla. So it was kind of like, hmm. Well, we, and, and like Hoopla that it's increased to six checkouts. That's the part. So it's like, okay, I'll go find out if we can keep that up. So um, that's a request. Do you want to pause and talk about that or? I mean, I pull the money, why not? Because it's moving uh, money from one line to another line. Well, that's, I guess what I'm saying is why not move the money from one line to another line if the money is there. I'm in favor of moving it. I don't know about anybody else. <laughs> I love providing more services, so I have no problem with it either. So, Karen. Yeah, yeah I, I just remember bumping up Hoopla at the beginning of the pandemic so that we would be able to more provide more services to people that are trapped at home. So maintaining that until they aren't, because it seems to have been embraced by the town or the patrons, I could see doing that, but I could also see decreasing it as restrictions are loosened up. And that way, because it is, a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So I can see addressing, lessening it as things normalize. Mm -hmm. We well, so. used to be four, right? Yes. Yeah. So Heaney, Janet, do you have any comments or thoughts on this? No? Janice, would you like to make a motion or would you like? All right. Um, if not, I can do it. I just, since you were the I first one to speak. Um, uh, well, I will make a motion to move 
$3,000 from the personnel line to the materials line. Is that what you want? Um, to continue to pay for Hoopla? To, well, to increase our checkouts, right? Mm -hmm. Back up to six. There? Oh, yeah. I'm so, yes. Sorry, that wasn't a very, that was a very jumbled motion. <laughs> That's right. You're the one that has to document it. So we're, <laughs> no, so, okay. So there's a motion to move the $3,000 from personnel to materials to be used to increase Hoopla checkouts back up to six. Do we have a second? Actually, I don't think that's actually what it is. Okay. It's actually to maintain the hmm. checkout limit of six. He needs an additional $3,000 to get through June. But okay, I was just reading from what it says, checkouts back to six. So are they not at six now? They are you, at you, six. You, okay. And so. Oh, no, no, the, the back to six was a comment from the patrons. Oh. Because it was at six, we went down to a four and now we're back at six, which they okay. like. But I, I think the intention, you know, back in the beginning, what Karen said was that we're, we're increasing it because everyone's at home and that we would go back to the previous COVID level, um, which is what I'm, I'm making a note for, for Max, you know, what am I reporting back to department heads after this meeting? And, you know, um, I think it's something we continue to watch as we watch, you know, when are things gonna open up? All right, so then the motion would be, I'm sorry for getting that incorrectly. So Janice, uh, to just move $3,000 from personnel to materials to be applied to Hoopla. Thank you for correcting me, Janet. Do we have a second to the corrected motion? I'll second. Karen, thank you. Any further discussion? Okay, I am in favor. Janet? Yes. Sohini? Yes. Janice? Yes. And Karen? Yes. And thanks to Max and Casey for doing some outreach and that's great. Yeah, it's very good. Um, okay, other things just to note, we have the tax forms in uh, for people to pick up. We have Massachusetts tax forms as well. Um, we already talked about print. Um, youth services have now, youth services program statistics now feature views and statistics, statistics for our, our YouTube channel. We're getting views on that. Um, this is part of their virtual programming. <clears throat> and uh, also under youth services, the first batch of children's baking kits have begun circulating. This is the project that Kathy and I are working on with um, two Girl Scouts in town. Um, and we had a meeting with them today. We meet with them like every month on Zoom and they give us a little update and they had sent us some um, demo videos of them uh, cooking in their kitchen and, and showing the books that they're tying this project to. Um, and uh, we gave them some notes on it. And so they're gonna work on some more videos. And I said, you know, when this is all finished, something for you guys to think about is coming to a trustee meeting and doing the presentation for them. Mm -hmm. Because they would love to see your mm -hmm. work and they'd love to mm -hmm. hear from you and consider <laughs> consider it, you know, and so they're 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 probably they'll probably come sometime, but I don't know when it's I don't know when they're gonna come, but they will come. That would um, be great. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's really good. So a silver award is 50 hours of work for a scout, and it's um, everything they really need to do it on their own. Um, let's see. Can I just say that I was um, I was excited to see that you had the 15 people attending the Zoom event concert performance for Roots of Black Music in America. That was great to, to read about. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you talked about EBSCO and Novelist. Um, a couple of things that I wanted to let you know that are going on in the NHLA, so kind of statewide 
in the legislature. Um, about the staff vaccinations, that's probably pretty clear, um, but the board voted to not send a letter to the governor requesting that the library staff be moved to a higher category um, and categorized as frontline essential workers. Um, the board was divided on that. So we're currently polling the membership um, and we'll see what the membership wants to do. But as the NHLA president, um, my name goes on the letter. Um, and I have a committee, right? You know, it's kind of like there's several people writing it and we make sure that our membership when we reported back to the members, you know, um, that they knew that there was a kind of dissension to the vote. Um, so we'll, I will find out probably this week what, what the membership wants to do. And then there's another, uh, there's a House Bill 544 that we're watching um, because it seems to use the same language as the Trump administration, uh, which had an executive order, which was really, um, not allowing uh, diversity training and diversity audits. And that's something that we're just starting to try and do in the library world. You know, we certainly want anyone who comes into the library to feel comfortable and welcome. We want to make sure people find the materials that are of interest to them. And, um, you know, we keep saying that, well, New Hampshire's not that diverse. And I think it's much more diverse than we, than we think on the outset. Um, and that's not only, you know, what your background might be, you know, in terms of your culture or your history or your race, it's also your points of view or, or lifestyle or, or anything like that. And, you know, we definitely want to meet the needs of our community. So, um, you know, the dress code was a great example of that, you know, where, you know, you take, take for granted that everyone knows what professional dress means and they don't. Only if you're of a certain age uh, or grew up in a certain time, you know what professional dress means and you have a picture in your mind. And when I gave the that original policy and I gave the staff policies from like Concord and um, maybe Wadley, they read it and they said, I, ha I said, just mark things that look strange to you. And it was stuff that was vague. I don't know what professional dress is. <sighs> Okay, you know, then let's kind of, you know, and we batted around piercings and tattoos and hair color and you name it, things tucked in, things not tucked in, what the skirt length, we went a long time around things like that. So, um, you know, but if, if, if we're trying to attract a diverse workforce to New Hampshire, part of what we need to do is look at policies as well and hiring, you know, um, so it's just something we're kind of looking at and watching. There is a um, lobbyist that the NHLA has hired to watch things like this. So we've got someone watching it for us, but um, the NHLTA wanted to, uh, we have a rep on the NHL, on the NHLA board, one of the NHLTA officers attends. Um, this year it's Conrad Moses. So he also wanted to be, you know, make sure the NHLTA is kept up to date about about this bill and other bills that come down the pike. So just as trustees letting you know what I'm finding out. Great. Sure, that's pretty uh, much I have, it. I have something to say on this. It means it's just not about this uh, diversity, but I just want to appreciate what the library is doing for this month as a patron, I would say, not as a library, as well as what you all did for the Valentine's Day, like who had that idea of putting that little uh, a candy tied and with the books and you know, it was like a heart shaped candy with each of the books which were displayed for Valentine's Day. That was a good, nice way of attracting this when you enter, you're seeing something. Okay, so it's something new. Let's go and check out the books. And actually, I checked out a book from there. Oh, so the nice. Was, yes, not yeah. with the lollipop the, from the Black History Month. So <laughs> yeah, the, we back that... to back. So it was like diversity in one frame you could present it really well I should say that was yeah, like it's, it's different topics in one enclosure you could keep them very nice and balanced so that I think that's quite a 
thing and it's like the moment you enter the library you're seeing that so if you can pull that thing a little more front i think i don't know because of the mm. that type of display yeah. yes when okay. you're doing thematic displays for the books yep. i think that yeah way. but uh, that, this is the first are... time i saw like a lollipop a heart-shaped lollipop with the books i don't know whose idea was that but i think that was angela uh but it's adult services and last year they did blind date with a book Mm -hmm. uh, with no candy so she wanted to change it up this year and um they're also doing they just put out another display on the table right next to where the reference desk is for um uh, random acts of kindness with a goodie bag um so there's that that that's another neat thing that they're doing with uh random acts of kindness ideas in the bag um so Thank you. Janice, were you going to say something? Well, it just talking about all that reminded me of the, um, the high numbers of people that were taking the make and take it kits. Um, that really showed me anyways that that was a need in the community and people were really availing themselves of that need and it was probably a way to keep your kids involved in something. So I thought that that's been a really successful program. Yes, I agree. Yeah. I mean, the, the teens, they have uh, zombie Valentine dolls to sew and everything is included, including a needle, a sewing needle in the kit. Um, I, I walked past that and it was so adorable. I took a picture of it and I sent it to Vivia, who's 13. And I said, hey, do you want to do something like this? And she's like, heck yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, I got a heck yeah. I was just and, thinking, um, I thought you were going to say you got one. And I was like, oh, can adults get one too? So <laughs> I can make the pack. No, I'm just kidding. Them. But no, I mean, but, it's cute. Yeah, no, it's, it's totally cute. cool and it's adorable. And she put it together all by herself over the weekend. And they said, let me send, you know, send me a picture and I'll send it to Jenny. Um, because I know the librarians want to know that you loved it. And it was cool. And she named her little voodoo, it's not a voodoo doll, but she, this little thing, um, I don't forget the, I forget the name, but you know, it's, it's cute. And I, I tell you, you know, the staff really, uh, they work. So, and I know you see it because obviously I'm hearing that it struck you, but they put so much uh, thought and I think love into some of this stuff that they're doing just you know, it's, it's amazing. It's, um, it's fantastic. You know, they just put so much into it. Well, they I'm have glad it's noticed. sincere appreciation. Yeah, yeah, excellent. Is there anything else before we move on to the treasurer's report? I don't have anything else to highlight, but if you guys have something else, then I can try and answer. Anything else? Okay, thank you very much, Yvette. Let's okay. move on to treasurer's report. Janet. Okay, so I am on the balance sheet um, ending as of January 31st. The fines beginning balance was 7,865.90. And we ended with 7,688.18. And then yeah, scrolling down to special. Our beginning, Our beginning balance, balance started start. with 20,490 and two cents. And then it ended with 20,474 and 76 cents. Any questions? You're doing your usual fabulous job. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of information. So I have a question for you, Janet, because sure. as I'm pulling my tax forms from my Fidelity account, of course, I see all of the tax forms for right. the library accounts. So I just as a matter of inquiry, because I don't know, what is the trustee's obligation as far as filing a tax? Nothing? Nothing. Okay. Nope. Okay. I, I actually have asked that too, because um, I asked Paul a couple of years ago, that same question, because I didn't know. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, but because we fall under a municipality, we don't okay. Pay, so. okay. 
Just thought I would ask since I saw the tax forms coming up, I thought I would uh, wonder. Okay, great, thank you. Any questions for Janet? Okay, moving on to acceptance of minutes. We have the first ones that I have are the ones from our retreat. So January 9th retreat minutes. Any corrections, questions, comments? Okay, I'll make a motion that we approve the mid-year retreat, January 9th, 2021 minutes. I'll second. Thank you, any further discussion? Okay, I vote in favor. Karen? Yes. Janice? Yes. Janet? Yes. And Sohini? Yes. Thank you. The next ones that I have before me are the um, January 19th, 2021. You might remember this was a very long meeting. So <laughs> uh, let's see, are there any questions or comments on, on this one? Okay, now I'll make a motion that we accept the January 19th, 2021 minutes. I'll second. Thank you, Janet. Um, I'm in favor. Sohini? Yes. Janice? Yes. Janet? Yes. And Karen? Yes. Thank you. And then we have our um, public meeting from February 4th, 2021. This was about the um, intern and the two new hires. Any questions or corrections on this one? Okay, then I will make a motion to accept the February 4th minutes. I'll second. I'll second okay, you got your pick. Janet and Karen both offered to second. <laughs> um, so I am in favor. Karen? Yes. Janet? Yes. Janice? Yes. And Sohini? Yes. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. All right, so committee updates. There's nothing for the building exploratory committee. The friends, is there anything that we need to know about from the friends? The friends. Um, they were talking about some possible fundraising activities. So they're exploring um, a few different things. Uh, they were talking about a book plate program. Um, I'm really drawing a blank again on that event. I wasn't sure if it was people purchasing book plates to go in the books. That was, um, you know, if someone graduates high school and you wanna, you know, adopt a book, your favorite book from the kids collection or something like that, then put a book plate in. It was that kind of thing, um, almost as a, a, not a memorial, because someone has passed away, but a memorial for a little bit of a more positive uh, mm -hmm. marking, a, marking a milestone, I think. Yeah. Okay. They're just trying to think of different ways since they don't have their book sale and mm -hmm. their events. So they're trying to come up with some ideas for fundraising. And their next meeting is February 22nd at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Great. Um, I was not able to attend the last Merrimack Public Library Development Fund Committee meeting that had been rescheduled. Um, so Yvette, was there anything at that meeting on fr that Friday? Um, like a week ago Friday, I think. Yes. Or was it just last Friday? Yeah. Yes. Um, before we pay for the invoice of the bricks, I have to count the bricks and account for the bricks and make sure they're all <clears throat> engraved properly. So right now they're under snow. Um, so it'll, it'll get done. It's just gonna be uh, interesting. Um, Jared is hoping that they aren't frozen together. They're in plastic, but they're bricks. So um, that's something, you know, the, the bricks are finished. They talked about that. Um, you know, not a lot of movement on the um, accounts. 
you know, they're, they're um, pretty slow accounts, you know, very conservative accounts. Um, okay. And it looks like they have another meeting scheduled for April 27th. Mm -hmm. So, okay, great. Um, town center committee. Yeah, um, actually we're kind of like a month back because I have another meeting with them this coming Friday and that will be our February meeting. But our January meeting was essentially about the town's 275th anniversary, we had guests uh, from the committee who were presenting um, a gift, uh, creating a gift to give to the town in commemoration of 275 years. And they, um, they presented a uh, down Twin Bridges Road, replacing a, um, a bridge, making it a covered bridge. The, the bridge itself is in existence, but what they would do is, is go over the bridge to make it look like the covered bridge that was originally burned. So they presented it to us and then Nelson Disco, who is the um, chairperson of that committee, wrote a letter to um, the the board to tell them that um, you know that the town center committee backed it up. Uh, everything else is pretty much frozen, literally, as far mm -hmm. as as as. Uh, sidewalks and, mm -hmm. and other things but that 275 yeah anniversary seems to be coming up and and also Yvette I read I read that you had met with the committee as well or had discussed I'm on the committee oh you're on the committee okay so yeah this was Chuck Mower and Nelson and a couple of other people that great had. so yeah it was pretty interesting so any anything about the 275th anniversary matt Asparius has a web you know he's managing the website for it we also have a link on our website for it if you want to find out what's going on with this um committee they're looking for the oldest person the oldest resident in merrimack so they can pass on the boston post cane um they're looking for what baby is going to be born around April 3rd or something, uh, which is the day of the anniversary, the actual day. I think it's actually Easter. Um, but, um, you know, there's a whole list of things that they've got planned that they hope to do. Some of it's going to be virtual. They want to have a large gathering in the fall, kind of hoping for a lot of these things can be in person. Great, thank you. Okay, um, so moving on to the committee updates. So under personnel committee, which while it's not exactly under personnel committee, um, but since it came from Karen, we do have to finalize the library director annual review document that Karen sent to us. I hope that you all had a chance to take a look at that. We had discussed that before. Um, so, um, any, Karen. Did you say something or somebody said something about maybe um, scheduling a, a special meeting for that so that we could just go over that and not run a regular business meeting super late? Which, oh, okay. You know, I mean, I don't know. I just, uh, I got one response uh, and, and, and it was essentially a, um, a format response, which is is fine, but un until we decide what we want to do, yeah, I was going to actually ask about that too. Just that because I think that one of the things with documents that we know is that everybody's prints differently, right? So yeah. maybe we could just try to come up with a PDF or something that looks the same yeah. or something. Um, but uh, 
Well, we had looked at this before, right? This is essentially the document that we had discussion about before. And I think that um, the email I sent today was just saying that, um, you know, Yvette had corresponded with me that this really should be something we discuss in a public meeting because it's not, doesn't fall under one of the RSA specifications for non-public, but that when we do do the actual discussion yeah. and, and completion of the review, that would be done in, we would be in non-public. And I did want to set dates for that. So um, do we want to, I was perfectly prepared, or I was prepared to discuss this tonight, but if people would prefer to meet some other time, I certainly will go with the will of the board. So um, were there more things or changes that we thought needed to be added? I felt like we had done a really good job discussing this at the re retreat. We went over this quite a bit, so. We were done. Okay. Well, we just need to approve it, like that this is, we agree yeah. that this is the one we're going to use. So did people have other things other than formatting that they wanted to change with it? No. No, okay. So- Do um, we actually have to formally approve it or is it- Well, I think we should formally approve it that we agree that this is what we're gonna do. And then I think that we should send Yvette a copy also once we have done that and it's been formatted. So she's aware of the document that we're gonna use for review. Okay. Um, and then we can, you know, base our discussion on that document. So. Um, what, what were the special meetings that those, the review when we would meet to do the review we would actually do the review mm -hmm. okay now i understand i i thought we were still talking about approving the contents no no today we will approve the contents and this okay. public meeting and then we would but we would meet in the non-public to conduct the review All right well i'll t i'll take you know i mean uh Janet sent me suggestions specifically about uh, keeping keeping different sections together, making sure that they don't yeah. go over to another page, mm -hmm. and also maybe more room for comments mm -hmm. at the end of each section. Because mm -hmm. if you'll notice, you know, it, it's five it's five sections. And then in each section are subsections. And then, and then there's a place at the end for comments mm -hmm. for that category. And uh, I don't know, I, I think I might take out the, um, the footer because it just takes up room. So, but other than, so these are just formatting issues, but the content though, I think we are all pretty comfortable with the content as it stands. And I will put together what I think is the, the formatting, save it as a PDF and send it to everybody. That would be fantastic. Okay, so then I will make a motion that we um, approve this version of the library director annual review for 2020 to 2021. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. Is there any further discussion? Okay, then um, I will vote yes. Sohini? Yes. Janice? Yes. Janet? Yes. And Karen? Yes. Okay. And so can we at this time also um, discuss the three, um, I don't want to say 360 because we talked that that might not be the correct word, but we were, the um, there had been some discussion, Janet, you had talked about the staff input one that you had. Um, right. So if we could it's talk the about. Same one from last year and mm -hmm. I even, I think it's the same one from the year before too. Okay. It's just a different format. It's just, instead of being in Excel, it's in Word. Okay. So. So we need to get that out and we need to set our dates for when we want to have our non-public meetings to um, complete our part of the evaluation. So what days look good for people? Um, do we want to start with this next week? Start early? Would you like to go into March? We have a meeting next a week next Tuesday, yeah. Um, 
Allison, I'm here every night. So, <laughs> so um, we want to get it done, be um, you know, before the next election, right? So um, we do want to complete that. It did take a while. We had quite a few meetings last year. I think that um, I'm not sure that it will be quite as cumbersome. The new format, I think, is going to um, lend itself to a more more of a discussion and less of a bit by bit like that. So um, would people like to start next would, week or would you like to look at the beginning of March? I can't do any other days next week. I'm having some outpatient surgery, so I'm not available. Okay. That doesn't mean so, you all can't meet without me, but I no, can't. we should, we should all meet. So I have a, a couple, what's up? Beginning March. Okay. So okay. if, Janet, were you going to make a suggestion for a time? I'm good whenever. Okay. So I have two, um, we could either meet during the week on a, an evening, or we could do a Saturday morning again, like a March 6th on a Saturday and try to like spend a couple of hours together with our coffee doing this, which I feel like we're very productive on Saturday mornings, but um, that's, that I don't know. So he knew we have to go at a certain time though, not too early. So <laughs> Um, but it's up to you yeah, guys if you prefer time, an even. Doesn't the time change? Are we moving our clocks forward sometime in March? On the 14th. Oh, the 14th. That's the 14th. Yep. No. So um, I will leave it up to the group. Whenever. So if somebody has a preference, just let me know. <laughs> I like the idea of doing it in the morning. <laughs> yeah. I'm good with March 6th. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we do a March 6th then at. Um, I think we met 8.30 last time. Was that, does that sound right, Sohini? Because yeah. you were the one that wanted at a certain time, so. <laughs> yeah, because by 8.30, like everybody is settled and I have some time. Kind of. Yeah, I feel like we we seem to be very productive on our Saturday morning meetings, so we don't need to make a, a regular thing of it, but it's certainly good for these kinds of things. So if something comes up, I think we're starting early enough that we have flexibility that we could reschedule to a different day. So by all means, if this does not work for you, let us know. Okay. All right. And Yvette, we will get you a copy, um, like Karen said, so that yeah, you can take I'll, a look I'll, at it. I'll attempt formatting it and everybody can let me know if it doesn't come together. So. And Janet, would you like to get the... Um... I already sent it out. Oh, okay. <laughs> so that's all, yeah. Okay, so can I just have some clarification for the March 6th? That's a non-public meeting, 8.30 in the morning on Zoom that it's just yes, us five. Yes, correct. That is what? Just us, just us five. Yeah. Yep. Um, so Janet, you, Janice, um, Janice, Janet sent the um, things out to the department heads. Oh, okay. no. Oh, okay. I sent out the form to the board. Oh, to the board. Okay. Sorry. So that's why I was going to ask you if you wanted to get it to the department heads or if you would like me to do that. So, oh, that, it'd be you. <laughs> okay. I will get it to the department heads. So I will do that this weekend. I will. Okay. So it will be me. <laughs> or, or Janice or Karen. That's okay. I don't other. mind. I can uh, print it off and put a note on it for them. That's fine. Um, so Yvette, does that mean that you have to be hanging out on that Saturday in order to? No. Nope. I think that's something you guys can set up mm -hmm. your own Zoom. Oh, yeah, no, I'll send. You know, I'll, and, and you're, and exactly. you're the um, yep. host. I'll send. I'll, I just need to post. I'll it. send you a Zoom link. I'll, oh. um, yeah. So you can post for us though, correct? But we wouldn't post the link anyways, because it's a non-public. So, okay. Yeah, I'll send out the Zoom link for that one. All right, great. Um, building and maintenance committee, nothing. Oh, I'm sorry, is there anything else for personnel before I move on? No. Okay, thank you. Um, nothing from building and maintenance. Finance committee, so we um, didn't, we, we met at the library so, Janice could, so Janet could witness my signature <laughs> on the Quimby Trust document, which Yvette has sent to the attorney for the Quimby Trust and also to um, the town attorney who um, had forwarded it to us. And I'm going, I had asked um, 
the attorney at Courier Law to send us a copy because there were a couple of things that um, a date that needed to be put on there and a witness as well. So once those things are done, I'm hoping that we will get a copy with the completed document and then it's done. So, but we are, we are this close to having the whole trust done. So, so yeah. when it is all done, will we all receive a copy? The library will have a copy on file. And the, I would imagine that it goes into the treasurer's. I don't know that it's the same document that we've been passing around. I don't know that there's any. Okay, I any... wanted one. I'm sure you could have one. Yeah, you can have one if you Not... want it. I mean, I, I'm happy to send it to you, but. I didn't know that it hadn't really changed much from what we've looked at before. It hadn't, it hadn't changed at all. Um, I had to sign it. You guys had given me permission to sign it. So I had to sign it and it needed a witness. And just because there had been sort of the back and forth um, with the changes and that Janet had been so instrumental in that, I asked her if she wanted to take a look at it because she was really the one that knew the things that needed to be changed. And she looked at it, I looked at it. We were in agreement that that was the document we had agreed to, um, that we as a board had agreed to. So I signed it, Janet witnessed it, but there was um, there needed to be a date done on their side and some things on their side for the signature that needed to be completed from Mr. Quimby. So we're just waiting for that and then it's official. So, so if, I, if I wanted to look at it and I didn't want someone to forward me a copy of it, it would be at the library. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, Yvette has a copy for her files. Okay. And we, I mean, I have a copy on my phone that I can forward to you if you want to see it. Yeah, I, I would like to see it if that's okay. Okay, yeah, it's the same one that you approved before that we were going to have me sign, I but I'm happy I to sign. I have it in my brain that it had to go back and forth a couple more times to get no. three whatever. So I'll, I'll just find my own copy. I, Janet took a picture of it and I can just send it to you. I, it's, it's a matter of forwarding an email. I will forward it to all of you so then you have a copy of it. So okay. no big deal. It well, takes that, two seconds. Would that also be something we'd put in the um, trustee manual? Well, Janet has a collection, I would imagine, of all of the things that are related to trusts and that sort of thing. So we could. They're also in the manual. Yep. So all the information about the trusts are in, of all the trusts that we have are in the manual. Right. So, yeah. And I have Great. been in I contact will. with um, the trustees of the trust fund to find out what is the next, like once it's all sealed, signed and delivered, what's our next step for them? Mm -hmm. So, okay. I'm going to let my whiny dog out. So <laughs> if someone, <laughs> um, if, if someone wants to start the review of February action items, I will be right back. Oh boy. What are the February action I'm items? Gonna... Besides, I will be forwarding a formatted director's review to everybody. He's just whiny because this is our usually the time that we're like chilling together in that chair, so he does not want to leave. Um, but I guess that one, Karen, and I will forward a the email with the Quimby document to everybody. And let's see what else. Um, I will um, get the um, staff input forms to the department heads. So just to clarify, that would be Arafa, Jen Stover. Max and Kathy, correct? And Joanne. And Joanne, okay. All right. Um, those were the things I have. Um, at, um, before the next agenda comes out, we as uh, trustees can come up with any questions we have about the copier for Janet, um, for, for Joanne and Max. And Yvette, if you wouldn't mind asking them if they'd be willing to attend, um, that would be great. And we have our meeting on next Tuesday with Jason. Yes. Okay. Is there anything else? Do we need to do anything for our next meeting for with um, Jason? Like, other, are we just attending and listening to him? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep, we're attending and listening. So I'm good for did that. you get the email I sent the second time? With those? Yeah, I got it. Okay, I, got it I, have, I couldn't send it as a one document. I had to break it to two. So I wasn't sure. It was bouncing back. The size was too big. Yeah. 
Hmm. Okay. Is there anything else? My goal was uh, not to be as long as the last one. So we succeeded in that. So I think it helps to have the other meeting at another time. Do you have any questions or comments for us, Ryan? I do not. Okay. I thank you all. You, you guys are great. So thank you for letting me be a fly on the wall. <laughs> uh, well, thanks. So um, Yvette. Are you going to go over the calendar? Yes, I can, unless there's something you wanted to say. No, I think um, just the filing period and the town deliberative session would be the things to yep. announce so, and draw people's attention to. Sure, so I'll go through all of the upcoming events. The Friends of the Library Board will be meeting on February 22nd, <laughs> excuse me, at seven <laughs> o'clock via Zoom. Um, the Library Board of Trustees have an appointment with um, an architect, an architect from SMP on the 23rd at 6:30 via Zoom. The filing period for town offices is February 24th through March 5th, 2021, at 5 p.m. The town deliberative session is March 10th, 2021, at 7 p.m. in the APR at JMUs. The Library Board of Trustees will be meeting again March 16th, 2021, at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Town meeting, voting day, April 13th, 2021, seven in the morning to seven in the evening. The Merrimack Public Library Development Fund Committee meeting, April 27th, 2021 at five o'clock via Zoom. And the NHLTA annual conference, May 12th and 13th, 930 to 245 virtually. Who is up for re-election this year? Whose position is up? Janet and Janice. We won't put you on the spot. We'll just say. <laughs> I'm gonna get my name changed first. <laughs> I went to, and then everybody I will go. Who is this strange person? Who <laughs> I called town hall and nobody knew what to do. Because <laughs> apparently it hasn't come up recently. So I got to go in there in person and talk to somebody. <laughs> You're a trailblazer, Janice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're like, what? <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'll come talk to someone. <laughs> That's funny. Excellent. All right. Uh, well, I with have, that, oh, Janet, I please. Say no one. Somebody does know. I just have to get to that person. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Uh, so Heaney and I yeah. <laughs> listened to the NHLTA roundtable discussion. Yeah. Um, it was an hour long. That, it was an More hour. More than an hour. More than an hour. More than an hour. Yeah, because they were just going back with the vaccination. Remember? You're right. So mm -hmm. most of it was all about vaccination and COVID and and like could How the, to fill in the uh, complete the vaccination form online and right. the library. Some of the libraries are helping the patrons how to navigate the system. Yep. And yeah, that's pretty that much I heard. Yeah, yeah that was pretty much all of it. Yeah, and when I heard what the other libraries did, I thought Merrimack Library did a lot more during the close down time. <laughs> yeah, yeah the, the Merrimack Library is awesome. So. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah, but yes, the but, but majority of the talk was about how to fill in the forms for online for the vaccinations. That's yeah. really helpful because it's been very confusing, I think, to a lot of people. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's overwhelming. Okay, great. So thank you so much for that. We, we, were, we made a trip to the beaches also. That was the fastest trip, oh, yeah. shopping trip I could, I made, I think. Like, oh, to buy snacks for the staff? Yes. yes. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I, great. I saw that today. They told me that there were snacks and I'm like, I didn't know about that. Like that they had been delivered. So I opened everything and put them in bowls. And oh, good. Made them a little prettier because I like that. <laughs> Thank you. I'll put some kind of sign up saying from the trustees or something like that. Um, so yeah. Well, I they were I just I tell you what those sun chips half a box is already gone. <laughs> Perfect. You were right. They're popular. I you know I just think um, I just hope that the staff really knows that we appreciate all that they've been doing. So, so. yeah, okay. let them know they can have a second mask. Yes, <laughs> they, they don't have to go and, and not have their official mask. 
I'm so glad they're excited. They like them. So, okay. All right. Then I have, there's nothing else. I am going to adjourn the meeting at eight, um, make a motion to adjourn the meeting at 8.51. I'll second. Thank you, Janet. Okay. And uh, I will say I'm in favor. Karen. Yes. Sohini. Yes. Janice. Yes. Janet. Yes. Awesome. Thank you everyone for your hard work. I feel like we've gotten a lot done and we're things are going great. So have, I hope that um, you all have a great evening. Stay healthy and well, and I'll uh, see you next Tuesday. Yeah. And I have not gotten into sign the stuff. I will be going into the library tomorrow and I will make sure I sign that stuff and get my own mask. So <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. Have a good evening, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. I, Duke, Duke is making an appearance too. Huh, buddy? <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Oh. Bye, everyone. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.